folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. You might not think this is a video for League since you're seeing me and not the actual League of Legends footage, but we'll get to that in a minute. This is going to be the first game in our League of Legends retrospective, a series that I wanted to do. This is where we look back at some of the early days of League of Legends. League is coming up on its fifth anniversary in the fall of 2014. So I wanted to look back at some of the early games and competitive play to look at how the game has evolved, how it's changed, look at some of the early players, since so many of them have now retired and moved on from the League scene, and just look at some of these early games and really see how League has evolved as a competitive game over the last five years. So anyway, you're gonna minimize me Let's go ahead and pull up a screenshot here. So this is what the old loading screen looked like, and I'll pull it up full screen here. This is what the original loading screen looked like for League of Legends. This is a match that I was able to find on YouTube. This is the oldest competitive match that I could find. This was played in, I believe, November of 2009, very shortly after League got out of beta. This was from some kind of minor European tournament called Clash of Legends, which I cannot find any information about whatsoever. So this is literally just all I have is the video footage. Uh, one of the interesting things about this, though, is guess what? We have Wicked actually playing in this game somewhat amazingly. Yes, yeah, so you're actually going to see Wicked, and the, and the video footage is actually from his point of view. But uh, needless to say, very different environment, uh, all sorts of interesting summoner choices. I don't know if Flash was even in the game at this point in time because no one was using it. And note that there are lots and lots, a couple mirror matches on the champions. This is before ranked play existed. There was no draft pick mode. That did not come along until later. So anyway, I'm going to queue up the footage and let's get started. All right, well, we're picking this up here with the game already started. Uh, unfortunately, this footage did not start with the loading screen. That's why I had to take that static image here. And we're actually going to get this underway at about, what, the one minute mark. Uh, the chat between the two teams were actually discussing whether they wanted to remake this game or not, and they had not actually decided that. So, as I said, this is from a competitive, some kind of tournament that was uh, apparently going on in late 2009, and this is on the European server at the time. So these teams are not picked due to draft mode. As I said, there was no draft mode, there was no ranked play. It was just uh, two teams of five, and they just picked basically whatever champions they wanted. That's why there's multiple incarnations of some champions. Like I think there's two Tareks in this game, and I think that there's two Sivers in this game. And uh, anyway, as far as what's going on here, you're gonna see Wicked's going to use his Clairvoyance. He's taking Clairvoyance Clarity, which is kind of a very interesting combination but uh, the other team also had a clairvoyance clarity combo and right here uh, they're actually going to get cv'd by the other team as well I, I have already gone ahead and watched this game and uh, despite getting cv'd by the enemy team they're going to go ahead and continue invading and by the way check out the location of the red buff not where it is nowadays but they're going to face check and oh no aoe damage out the wazoo gold card stun from twisted fate quirky's drawing to draw First blood for the enemy team, and this has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Another gold card stun coming out from the enemy team's Twisted Fate, and it is just time to run away. Sivir on Sivir violence right there, but it's the enemy team's Sivir who gets the kill. And by the way, the portrait art you might notice is very different for a lot of these champions. It actually might be difficult to identify who is who. There are the starting items right there. Triple uh, red crystal start, three of the ruby crystals, and up. Oh, check it out, a minion on the enemy team has killed the enemy team's Tarek. So we've got a very, very interesting start to this game. Two to zero in kills for the other team, for the team that is not Wicked's team. Uh, again, I don't know what these teams were actually called, unfortunately. And uh, we're going to pick up from there. So let's start out with some of the big differences. There's the starting items again. Remember, by the way, I'm not the one getting this footage. I'm just going off the pre-recorded footage. So I can't move the camera and I don't control what it's looking at or anything like that. Uh, starting items, you might have noticed a lot of ruby crystals. You may have noticed Wicked's starting item is a mana manipulator. And by the way, that was a very standard starting item early on in League's history, particularly for these sort of uh, supports who aren't really support type champions, who I'll have more to say about in a little bit as we go forward. But uh, yes, so Mana Manipulator, when I first started playing the game in uh, mid-2010, this was a very popular item. I would play Soraka and I would start Mana Manipulator. This item, for those who don't know, because obviously I don't I'm pretty sure Mono Manipulator doesn't exist in the game anymore. Uh, it simply provides Mono Regen to yourself and to nearby allies. It's an aura item. It just provides Mono Regen, does not provide any combat stats, just Mono Regen. But it was a very popular item 
uh, at the time. For some reason, we all thought that this was good. Uh, anyway, in terms of laning assignments, yes, uh, the one thing you might notice when you look at very early league games is that there are no formal laning assignments. People pretty much just take champions and send them to whatever lane they felt like. This is because the metagame really hadn't developed yet. Uh, people just would play whatever. So our bottom lane here is Sivir Tarek, which, you know, that sounds fine, but you got to keep in mind, Tarek isn't really being played as a support, and I'll say more on this as we go along. But we've got Sivir Tarek against Cho'Gath Twisted Fate on the other team, so that's a lane that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. In the top lane, the other team is also running Sivir Tarek, but they're running it in the top lane instead of the bottom lane. Uh, the reason why you typically see a dual lane bot is because it gives better dragon control, but again, that was something that kind of developed over time. So the enemy team is also running Sivir Tarek lane up in top. Uh, however, Wicked's team is running a Malphite Nasus lane in top, and I really do wonder what the logic was behind that one. Uh, keep in mind, this was a tournament, and this was actually the finals of a tournament, so these were not bad players. These were all you know, players that were well above average in terms of the competitive scene at this time, but uh, I must admit the Malphite plus Nasus lane does not really make a whole lot of sense to me. Nasus being one of the worst champions possible to put in a duo lane due to the way that his kit works. Uh, and in mid, it is a Quirky versus Quirky lane. Uh, you might have also noticed the tower right there, that is Summoner Fortify, a summoner spell that existed during Season 1, but hasn't existed since then. Summoner Fortify would make towers invulnerable for a short period of time. You couldn't damage towers. Riot took it out of the game because it promoted turtling and they really didn't like that. By the way, you might notice Twisted Fate is gating back into lane. You might say, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is that possible? Twisted Fate is only level 4. How can he possibly use his ult at level 4? Well, that's because it wasn't Twisted Fate's ultimate at this time. So we actually get a chance to see Beta TF, which was the most broken champion that Riot has ever designed in League of Legends. Note the gold card stun and uh, the extreme, le well, let's see, oh, we got a fight here. We'll get back to beta TF in a minute. And we're going to see a one-for-one -one kill right there. Sivir getting the kill onto Twisted Fate. But Cho'Gath then getting the kill on Wicked's Tarek. And then Cho'Gath getting a second kill right there. And there is uh, Wicked Shopping in the item store. So, yes, uh, we ended up being a two-for-one in favor of the enemy team. And there's that quirky versus quirky duel in mid, and Sivir Tarek versus Nasus Malphite up in the top. So Ro Roid Racer, the uh, the Cho'Gath player right there, ended up getting... Actually, I think he got a kill and an assist, not a double kill, but uh, still a two-for-one. Also notice that Wicked went back to shop, and he did not buy anything, even though he was on, I think, 650 gold. Uh, he just was still saving up for a Giant's Belt, and didn't buy anything, didn't buy health pots, didn't buy wards. If you look at the minimap, note that neither team has any wards down. Uh, another thing that bears mentioning here right now, before we get back to some of these other issues, there are no junglers in this game. Uh, you might have noticed that, or maybe didn't even think about that, but 2v2 top, 1v1 mid, 2v2 bot, no one farming the jungle, none of the buffs being taken, nothing like that. Uh, you might have noticed there that uh, the little click here for part two, I had to, I had to edit this together from th a couple, couple videos, so... Hopefully not a big deal. And uh, the quality drops while the video was buffering. Uh, this is, uh, again, a very rare example of a game that was actually in HD quality from back in 2009, one of the reasons why I picked this one. Uh, yeah, but anyway, to get back to my previous point, no, no junglers. The idea of having a specific character, uh, one champion that only stayed in the jungle, was really an innovation in the early part of 2010. I would say that that was developed in maybe the first three or four months in 2010. And uh, when I first started playing, which was a little after that, in the summer of 2010, there were a lot of debates about whether it was worthwhile to have a jungler. Uh, you would hear, you would see people on the forums stating very, very vociferously that uh, it was not worth it to have a jungler. That uh, you, that it was better to, to if the other team had a jungler, you should two v one top and deny them in top lane, and then that that was better than having a jungler. Uh, now, again, that was kind of silly because if one team has a jungler and they're farming both jungles, and you've got a duo lane, you're, you know, you're going to fall way behind in golden experience. But uh, that was a real debate at the time, and it was something that you would hear a lot of people arguing about quite vociferously on the forums. While that was going on, there was another kill in top lane for the other team. This game is not going very well for Wicked's team, unfortunately. Uh, they're, uh, especially in that top lane. Their quirky player is actually winning in the quirky versus quirky mirror match, but that top lane is really a disaster. Again, note that Twisted Fate has just gone back to shop, and 
he's already coming back to lane again. Again, to get back to that point from before, where I was interrupted by the team fight. How is Twisted Fate able to do this? Well, Beta TF actually had the ability to move anywhere on the map, and it was not his ultimate. It was actually his E skill. Uh, it was on a long cooldown. It was on about a 30, 40 second cooldown, but he could teleport anywhere on the map, and it was not an ultimate. So, <laughs> broken much? Yes, just a little bit. Uh, in addition to that, his ultimate uh, was a well. We'll get back to this because there's a tower dive. Cho is just gonna walk through the walk through the tower, dive, pick up a kill on Wicked, gets the feast. Wicked, stop shopping! Oh, Twisted Fate gets taken out by a tower shot on a poorly executed second half of that dive. Uh, the TF player was tanking the tower. Apparently, didn't realize he was tanking the tower, and was unable to walk out of the way. He couldn't flash out of the way because. He didn't have flash, and I don't even think the summoner spell was in the game at this point. Uh, Wicked is going back to the shop. He's going to buy some health pots, but uh, really probably should buy something because he still has no combat stats. Uh, Twisted Fate, to get back to the point. Yes, he could teleport anywhere on the map. Again, his, his uh, Q and W were the same as now. Wild cards and pick a card. Uh, although the gold card was originally a area of effect gold card stun, uh, I believe in this patch version it is not a area of effect stun, but it is still, of course, a point and click stun. Uh, but his E was an ability where he could teleport anywhere on the map, and it was on like a 30 second cooldown. His ultimate, global reveal, same as it is now, reveals all enemy champs. Global slow slowed all enemy champions on the map, and also allowed him to teleport in with half the cooldown. So instead of it being like a 6 second cooldown, it was like a two second cooldown or something like that. Anyway, we are going to see a kill here. Malphite uses his ult. That's going to get a kill against the enemy team Sivir. Meanwhile, though, people are coming into the map. Twisted Fate is there because of course he's there. He's got a global ultimate, but he's going to get taken out by Asphalt22, the quirky player in mid on Wicked's team. And they've just gotten a very nice two for zero right there. Enemy team tried to come into the fight, but the Malphite initiation was pretty good and they're able to pick up a kill, and now they're looking to do their best job to push mid. Uh, so there are really two options that they have here. They can try to push mid, or they could go and take Dragon. Uh, they're going to choose to push mid, which is not a bad call, but it does look like they probably could have gone and gotten Dragon here as well, if they were interested in that. But instead, they're going to get the mid tower, so it's not a bad play at all. Two for zero and the mid tower. A very nice pickup, helping to put Wicked's team back in the game. Uh, now that... The tab screen there showing the scoreboard only on the screen for a very short time and couldn't really get a chance to see much of it. So you're going to have to take my word for this here. But another thing that's going on in these early games that you really, really notice if you watch a lot of the competitive scene today is just how low the minion scores are. Uh, the the CSing, as we like to say, that is how good people are at farming, not nearly developed to the same extent. Uh, what that means is you'll see players getting items at much, much later timings because people are not as good at last hitting. People are not farming as relentlessly. They are, the, the knowledge of how to use creep waves, how to manipulate them is not there to the same extent. So whereas today, uh, there's a nice CV on the dragon, seeing the enemy team doing it. Uh, remember, keep in mind, there's no dedicated jungler, so there's no smite in this game either. It doesn't give you much control over buffs, but the enemy team does have Cho'Gath, so they will have his feast that gives them some control over things like dragon and baron. Uh, anyway, back to the previous point. By the way, check out Quirky's build there at the top of the screen. Catalyst into boots into BF sword. Uh, I, I don't know what he's building there. <laughs> don't quite know what that's going for, but... Uh, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll see what that turns into later on in this game. Anyway, since people didn't farm nearly as well, I think the highest CS at the 10-minute mark was like 70, and most people were down around 40 or 50. Now, again, that's also partly due to the fact that there are two duo lanes and no junglers in this game. It means that there's a lot of fighting for farm. But uh, the, the minion kills are just much lower, and that means the farm is lower, the gold totals are lower, and people get their items much, much later. Uh, I remember I, I, when I was looking at this game, I think people are getting Rod of Ages at like the like the 18 to 20 minute mark or even 25 minutes, whereas nowadays in the competitive scene, people really like to get their Rod of Ages by like 13 to 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you might, again, that goes by really fast if you want to go back and pause that perhaps. Anyway, there's the Twisted Fate Ultimate. Uh, Twisted Fate Ultimate is used in top lane to get that kill. Uh, you might have noticed again the little eye appears above everybody, the eye of Sauron or whatever. That is, of course, still the case with TF today. But remember, global slow on his ultimate as well, and it decreases the channel time. Plus, he can teleport wherever he wants 
even when his ultimate is not up. Uh, I often kind of wonder what it would be like if we could go and give beta TF to uh, one of the professional teams today. There's the Fortify coming out to defend that tower, but imagine what, what teams could do, like imagine what the top Korean teams could do with a Twisted Fate who can port anywhere on the map every 30 seconds totally for free, and it's even less. it was even less than that with cooldown reduction, but like TF could teleport anywhere on the map every 20 seconds and imagine if you gave, like, a top Korean team the ability to do that. That would be pretty insane. I, I do wish that I could see that sometime, because there'd just really be no way to defend against that kind of global pressure. Anyway, while that was going on, Wicked's team did take the bottom turret. So they actually traded a turret for a turret, a turret in top lane for a turret in bottom lane. And on to part three. Here we go. So didn't really, didn't really lose too much there on that crossover. So, where do we stand right now in the game? Well, obviously we can't see global gold totals, but uh, the enemy team is definitely ahead at this point in time. Uh, they were the ones who got that initial level 1 fight. They are ahead in kills. Although, by the way, notice that you can't see the overall kill score unless you hit tab. All you can see is your personal KDA. One other thing I'll mention is that when you hit tab to look at the, uh, at, you know, the items and so on, you can't see what summoner spells the other team brought. Uh, at this point in time, and I remember this when I started playing as well, you could only see the enemy team's summoners on the loading screen. Once the game started, you had no way to tell what summoners the enemy team had brought. So you really just had to remember what summoners they had. Anyway, Wicked is getting CV'd right here. There's a clairvoyance by the enemy team, but they're going to go in and try to continue test this blue buff still anyway, but the enemy team is apparently well aware of that. Uh, Sivir's gonna pop her ultimate. Uh, in comes Twisted Fate. It's an AoE fest from the enemy team. Gold card stuns coming out, and this fight is just not going very well at all as Wicked's team gets totally blown up. There is the global slow from the Twisted Fate ultimate, and that's actually going to be a 5 for 0 ace. The enemy team collapsed on that very, very hard, and they were just able to blow up Wicked's team. Again, it was probably a dubious choice of an invade because they were already behind and they were moving into the enemy team's side of the map with no vision. But again, nobody has any vision because note that there is not a single ward on the map. And again, I, this is not a solo queue game. This is, you know, like a ranked... It's the equivalent of a ranked fives game, although it's not ranked play, obviously, because ranked play didn't exist yet. But it is a team of five. They're actually on Skype. Uh, well, I assume or some kind of voice chat service, maybe not Skype, but something like that. And uh, all of these players are in full communication with each other throughout the game, so they were talking to with one another. I have gone ahead and muted that because um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear my commentary. Uh, I'll see if I can post a link to the original video uh, in the description for this if you want to go back and see it with the original audio. And oh no, Wicked's team is getting caught out in a rotation through the jungle. Gold card stun comes out for the initiation. Cho'Gath follows up with a rupture. And oh no, no, no. So that was that was the classic missed rotation right there. Uh, the enemy team was able to catch Wicked's team as they went to defend the top turret. But they got engaged on from the brush. Again, they had no vision in their red side jungle. And uh, the gold card into the Cho'Gath rupture just blew them up completely. Uh, Malphite trying to defend this tower. But Malphite, you're not going to be able to defend a tower with a 1 versus 5, and that was probably not the best decision. Would have been better just to back off and not try to hold that tower, because uh, it's not going to happen there, buddy. In any case, though, uh, people are reviving, but uh, this game is pretty much lost already, and there's not a great deal that Wicked's team can do from this point in time. Uh, the, the, what is it, the Inhib Towers did not regenerate health at this point in time. Uh, again, Wicked's team taking another fight, 3v5, Really not a good decision. They just continue to keep fighting when they don't have numbers, and they keep getting picked off in these little 2v, 2v5s, 3v5 engagement. Enemy team grouped up first, and they have uh, been able to stick together. Excuse me. The first real metagame that came along in terms of competitive play was the area of effect meta, and you can kind of see a little bit of that in this game. When the game first started out, teams... Uh, First realized, yeah, note the, note the creep scores there. They're really low. 100 was the highest for Wicked's team. That was their quirky player solo mid. And then 68 was the next highest. Uh, but really, the first kind of strategy the teams did was they realized that if you grouped up before the enemy team, you would often get a really big advantage from that. So the first metagame was really the area of effect metagame. And you really see a little bit about that. But by the way, Nasus 07 with no items whatsoever. Nasus was just not a good pick in a duo lane. And you can see a little bit of that in this game. Uh, a lot of heavy prep, uh, focus on champions like Malphite, Cho'Gath, 
Uh, Annie was very popular for her area of effect damage, things like that. Uh, and you would see a lot of that, particularly in Season 1. It was just like two big AoE teams just slamming into each other, and whoever could get their area of effect, off da area of effect damage off first would win the team fight and then win the game. And then, of course, teams got better at doing things like uh, splitting, split pushing, and poking, and things like that as a way to counter that. There's the global TF ultimate, by the way. Uh, note that everyone on the map is slowed as a result of that ultimate. Uh, TF just used his ult to port into bottom lane and take another turret for free. Uh, at this point in time, teams really did not exploit just how broken TF was. Anyway, Wicked's team, note where they are. They do not have Quirky. Quirky is in top lane farming. I know that that portrait's kind of weird, but that is the Quirky portrait. So they have four people running around with no vision when they are very, very, very far behind the enemy team. And the enemy team has a TF2 for global presence. So... This is a very bad place to be. Again, Quirky is now finally coming over, but still hasn't really joined them yet. The Boomerang Blade's going to hit and do some damage. Stun hits on Sira, but she's just going to block that, and a Cho Rupture is going to knock up two members of the enemy team. They're fighting so far away from their base when they're this far behind, and you just know this is not going to end very well. So the first focus comes down. Wicked is going to fall. Tarek is dying. Sivir's dying. Everybody's dying right now. And that's another 5 for 0 ace, and that was just not a good team fight to take. Really had no business trying to fight that far away from their base. They, they, they needed to defend towers. There's no way they could win a fight in the open, but uh, for whatever reason, we're out away from safety, got engaged on, and that's pretty much it. And that Shogath is basically unkillable at this point for Wicked's team. They simply don't have the damage, they don't have the items yet, and uh, he's just tanking that tower. So this is going to be another inhib taken. And there's super minions on the Nexus turrets. There's not a whole lot to be done at this point in time. Uh, Wicked still does not have much of anything in the way of combat stats. He's just got a Mana Manipulator, a Giant's Belt, and a Null Magic Mantle. Not, not really a whole lot there. So the enemy team is going to continue their push here. And they're on the Nexus right now. Exhaust coming out on both sides. And we're going to see another nice knockup, another nice rupture. There is the Twisted Fate ult as well for the Global Slow. Fortify comes out, but it only lasts for about 3 seconds if I remember Fortify correctly. Down goes the next Nexus turret. Nasus, oh, Nasus, this was not a good game for the dog. Maka did not have a very good game here. And that's going to be it for this one. So that is GG on this one. Anyway, so wrapping this one up, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go back to the screenshot here as I sit here. Uh, hope If you've never seen what League of Legends play looked like in the early days, hopefully this gives you a little idea. And again, I don't want you to think that these are bad players, because these were very good players at the time. It was simply an era where people hadn't developed effective strategies yet, uh, and that only comes about through lots of practice and through the crucible of professional play. So anyway, going forward with this series, we're going to try and see how some of these things develop. We're going to look at how the League uh, metagame evolved and how the competitive scene developed over time. I hope that you guys are going to enjoy some of this stuff. Anyway, until next time, hope you guys are having a great week. I'll see you again soon. Until then, take care.